Bruce Cassidy says that he wants his team to handle business tonight in Arizona. Our preview coming up next. Your Locked On Golden Knights, your daily podcast on the Vegas Golden Knights, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi again, everyone. Tony Cordasco and Chris Golick from Las Vegas. We appreciate you making us your first listen each and every day. You can find us wherever you get your podcast. And please subscribe to the Lockdown Golden Knights YouTube channel. Arizona, Chris, 20 points out of a playoff spot, but three and three in its last six all at home. Uh, VGK needs to avoid a letdown tonight because especially they because they have some key road games coming up, Edmonton and Vancouver. Uh, we'll talk about whether or not this is a dangerous game for VGK. The way Bruce Cassidy was uh, speaking yesterday, it just made it seem like just go there, take care of business, and come back home. In any event, uh, Cassidy saying that Tomas Hurdle will not return in Tempe tonight. So we will definitely see him return in his debut on the trip to Canada is what we're reading here. Um, could this be something that is salary cup related? And then uh, Nick Wah, he suffered a minor injury at the end of the Vancouver game. Did you notice anything happening to him as Brendan Briso Brisson, will be in action for VGK tonight? I didn't notice. I actually didn't go back and watch or really look at the, at the logs and stuff yesterday. I, I see um, what you did there. Wah. Watch, Nick. Watch. That's that's um. A bad it's bad Friday. Joke it's right Friday. Here. It's WTF bad, Friday. Bad joke. Yeah. Um. Bad. No, I mean, you hit a couple things there, and one of them is kind of maybe my what the Fridays, honestly. But um, starting with Nick Wa, what's hard to understand is like I get he's out of the game, injured. Fine, that's going to happen at the stage of the game. Bumps, whatever. They'll probably uh, be out until next season if they call it a minor injury. But we'll see how things shake out on that bottom line. The question that I'm going to ask myself is, why is Brisson at least presumably going to be on the fourth line tonight when they can move Paul Cotter down to that fourth line? He can be the energy player that he is. And you let Brisson go up on the second line and show his skill set. That's And that could end up happening still. It could be a... It could be a uh, could be fog and mirrors, you know, at the Golden Knights were doing a practice yesterday and stuff like that. So we'll see exactly what happens there. Um, the hurdle situation is interesting and complicated. Been skating since early in the week. He's been in a standard jersey, I think, since Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken. And it seemed like the plan was Friday, but there's not the money to activate hurdle at this exact moment as long as Yuri Patera is the backup goaltender. So this is where the people that are concerned about VGK and their cap stuff, this is where they could possibly, possibly, possibly have something to wonder about. If Hurdle's good enough to practice in a contact uniform, does that mean he should be, or not Hurdle, but, if a player is good enough to practice in a standard uniform, mm -hmm. does that mean they should be able to play in a game? And that's a fair argument. It's a fair argument. Yeah, that's something the NHL needs to look into because everything is so, so rigged. And this will be a, quote, must-win game, according to Golic tonight. You see it on the slate. Arizona has been playing a more wide-open game of late. They beat Nashville. They played Vancouver really tough. Of course, they're on the tail end of the back-to-back -back in a 2-1 to -one victory earlier this week. Arizona has a winning record at home, 20 and 19. And they would love nothing more than to play the role of stinking spoiler, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, this they is still, they still have a pulse, right? Is what I'm getting at. I mean, listen, this is the playoffs are gone. They're out of the picture. So, what matters right now for the Coyotes are a few things. You have, whether it's vets or younger players, they're looking to establish themselves. Whether it's going to be in the Coyotes lineup next season or another team next season, 
So this is where they work hard down the stretch and the younger players are trying to leave, you know, make an impression on the coaching staff and the general manager and all that stuff. So they have an expanded role next season. And the same thing goes for the vets and such. They're playing, yes, they're it's a team game, but they're honestly, a lot of them are going to be playing for themselves down the stretch to simply have an, have employment next season or to get a raise and stuff like that. And they have nothing to lose right now. If they lose, okay, mm-hmm. fine, who cares? It's not, not a big deal. So the Golden Knights need to go down and, like Coach said, take care of business against a team who would love nothing more than just to simply stick it to the Golden Knights because the Golden Knights are you know, obviously in the playoff picture and in the Stanley cup conversation again. And it's, there's no, it's not hard for the Coyotes to get up for this game tonight is I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay. And, and Vegas Bjorn, of course, his comments about the Yotes and Bruce Cassidy about the Yotes and all that negative stuff. Should that be some billboard material there in Arizona? Corral Vamelka is probably in net tonight. Well, let me stir it up. Uh, And then uh, Clayton Keller, is on a heater, seven goals, seven assists in the last 14 games. And Nick Smaltz, 21 goals, 35 assists for Arizona. So they still do have some players left. However, however, Arizona, they were sellers at the deadline. Um, and they were through a spell. Was it something? They lost something like 14 straight. Is that about right? Okay, I think there's another was around... one the Friday moment. I was just looking while you were doing the intro and stuff, and you saw me like, I know you're not paying attention, bro. And then, uh, so at the deadline, I know, I like this. Uh, Jason Zucker went to the Predators. Uh, Matt Dumba went to Tampa. Troy Stetcher to Edmonton. So they do have sort of a youth movement in Arizona. I've talked about this a few times. These are all the guys on the hockey cards that I'm excited to pull right now. Matthias Michelli. Uh, Logan Cooley's cards just hit in, in a product that came out actually on Wednesday. So we're having fun chasing his cards. Um, Dylan Gunther, Dylan Gunther, Dylan in Gunther there? we had a big card of his yesterday in my show. Giannis Moser. How much was it worth? How much was it worth? Probably three, 400 bucks, but I mean, okay, still that's it's, good. It's a fair card okay. for, you know, that's whatever. a good card. Yeah. Uh, Barrett Hayton is someone who's, who's just trying to kind of find his way and stuff like that. Is he injured? Uh, Bala McKay, he another injured? one. Yeah. I mean, it, it goes on and. I said at the start of the season, I think this is probably my favorite roster of under 25-year-olds in the entire National Hockey League. My concern also is these players are going to, you know, certainly develop into bigger talents, especially Michelli, especially Logan Cooley and players of that stature. Will the Coyotes be able to hold on to these players given their current stadium situation, which uh, me and Chris will be Check it out tonight, and it's gonna be um, it's gonna be a good time. It's gonna be a good time. You don't have your mullet wig for the mullet arena now. No, I've I, I actually do have a mullet wig somewhere in this house too. That's funny you oh, said that. Dude, you, should that. that. you should wear that. You should wear that. That was a Halloween thing a stuff? long, long time ago. I was I, I dressed as a I dressed as a hillbilly that was under house arrest, and I we had like a little pool in the backyard. I had an ankle bracelet on with it was in the water and drinking Budweiser, and that was, a, that was a fun night. That was a fun night. At 10 a.m., at 10 a.m. Uh, Thursday, 10:30. the Arizona Sports website reported that Alex Marullo is talking to other per, uh, prospective buyers about purchasing the Yotes. Uh, Marullo is seeking $1 billion for the club. The Coyotes, de- they denied it. Salt Lake City, perhaps, here we come. Of course, the drama continues there. And then Elliot Friedman reporting yesterday that the Arizona Land Department announced a June 27th auction on the property of land uh, land where the Coyotes do want to build that new arena. It, never ending, is it? Is this ever going to be resolved? And they don't like the NHL. Batman does not like Marulo. It's called. What I don't like times. is all this talk of expansion, and you have this situation happening down in Arizona. You have the San Jose Sharks playing in a nearly empty barn every night and other teams that are in financial and stadium distress right now. But, hey, let's let's keep expanding. Now, don't get me wrong. It, obviously, I'm kind of talking out both sides of my mouth because, well, expansion worked in Vegas, been working pretty well. I don't mean the success of the team from on ice. I just mean the business side of it. T-Mobile's been sold out every single non-COVID related game since the Golden Knights inception. And I don't know if the Kraken have sold out every game, but 
they do pretty darn good. So the business of expansion is certainly hot. So I get both sides of that. But where are they going? I don't Salt know. Lake, Houston. Where 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 do you think NHL goes next? I feel like Houston is probably the front good, runner. I don't want them to go back market. to Atlanta. Like fool me once, fool me twice. They've right. two franchises have gone through Atlanta. Quebec, Quebec could be interesting, but they lost a franchise too. So well, but it's a while ago. It is, it is, and that's why Houston seem Houston seems to be the spot. Salt Lake, I don't know much about the sports side of Salt Lake City, um, but Houston seems to be not bad. But Salt Lake would be cool because it's you know driving distance, I guess, for another hockey game. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, coming up next, what the skate blades? That's Chris's topic. We'll talk about that when we return right here on Locked On Golden Knights. Let me do some research. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA account? That's right. Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar that you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this. Now through April the 30th, the end of the month, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar that you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold, that gets you for most of your retirement money, thanks to their IRA account with a 3% match. This offer, again, is good only through April the 30th. So get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal information, claim is as of quarter one of 2024 and validated by Radius Global Market Research. We are back on this edition of Locked On Golden Knights, Tony Cardasco and Chris Golick from Las Vegas. We appreciate you making us your first listen each and every day. I do apologize for sounding like I was on Quaaludes yesterday on the show. I was just like, I said, no, there's something wrong with the speed. Golic, you sounded fine. Am I okay today? Am I back on track here? Or do I sound a little slow? Like you sound, I mean, you sound like you do every other show. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but you sound how was fine. it yesterday? How was it yesterday? I'm fine. I'm fine. I was over enunciating words. I wasn't so sloppy. This was not me. Okay. So you're saying we normally have a clean show with proper enunciation? No, I hope it's not. I hope it's not perfect because this is a podcast and I'm a podcaster, not an entertainer, and I'm not an alleged broadcaster. What the skate blades? Where are we going with this? As uh, you're talking about Jack Eichel blowing tires right and left. What are you, where are we getting at? So Golden Knights put out a tweet as kind of a joke. Jack blew a tire and he had a issue with his skate blade. Now, this one was a little bit different than the last two so let's go back when the gold knights played boston back in what was that january jack finishes that game gets a little dinged up says he's fine after the game and how long was eichel out during that span was it like after the all-star break and all that however long he was gone i I don't got the numbers actually i do have the numbers in front of me here so eichel 56 of seven of six of 75 games so he missed like 20 games 19, during all 19, that drama 19. right there on, man, you got like a fog machine over there or something i know it's um, awesome so going back to when eichel had that injury so there's two things Grizzlick from the bruins he checks eichel eichel's leg kind of gets caught behind him so he the injury might have happened there or after eichel goes down and goes to get up his skate blade is missing he goes to push off and you see him take a very awkward step The only comparable I can have is if you've never experienced losing a skate blade on the ice. We all walk up and down stairs at some point throughout the day, at least hopefully at some point we go up and down a set of stairs. Every now and then, you know, in all of our lives, we go to take a step and there's either a stair not there or you forget that a stair isn't there. And either way, like that's the most awkward feeling because your body's going down in a certain direction and all of a sudden, there's a stair there that you forgot about. So it's just a very awkward landing. That's what it's like when you lose a skate blade. You go to push down like you always do. You dig into the ice, you accelerate, and you go. Well, no, that's not the case. So point being is that's when Eichel's injury happened, whether it was due to the skate blade being gone or it happened before. Either way, he lost a skate blade in all that nonsense, and he suffered an injury. Go back to the game when the Golden Knights just played the Vancouver Canucks. Early on in the game, Eichel goes barreling to the net, goes flying, 
loses his skate blade. I don't know how he lost it, whether it got caught on the net or whether it just happened in the contact. But point being, it happened again. Jack loses a skate blade, and you're concerned over injury when these things do happen. And then now in practice, the Golden Knights put this out. Jack blew a tire. Big smiley face. That's not funny. That no, that's not funny at all, I, right? Honestly, of all the tweets I've seen this team put out, I honestly didn't think that was the best taste tweet. But, uh, I mean, I don't know. They, we, have, Me and the Golden Knights have differing opinions of taste, I guess, these days. Did, so, you, uh, did you reach out to them and, and ask them to kindly pull it, take it down? You didn't. Okay, go ahead. Shut up, so, Tony. Shut up, Tony. Yeah. Shut so up, Tony. I'm too lazy to press the button. So, point being is, Jack, he has an issue with his blade. I don't know if it popped out in this circumstance. It got loose or simply there's a chip. Whatever it is, Jack has an issue with his skate. He goes down yesterday. So, I do the, the good old quote retweet and said, hey, you know, are there equipment issues? This has been happening a lot. This is something else that could have led to injury. What's going on here? And, of course, the tweet kind of takes off like wildfire and we get five figures of views on it and stuff and people are commenting and someone makes a comment about Bauer coming in and is there a concern or is the league tracking this type of thing? Get the skates fixed and safe, period, from Ringo. Thanks. Appreciate that. And then, of course, the here come the Euler fans coming in about cap circumvention. And stuff. <laughs> yes. That's, um, I love that. That's great. It is fun. It's fine. That's but funny. So real fast, like these blades, it's not, it's very – I was actually going to grab my skates, but I got busy this morning. I was going to do it for you all. But the way you pop off blades, they have like a quick-release trigger. At least that's how the Bauer skates are where you put your finger in, like on, on the bottom of the skate, you press a button, you take a tool that kind of looks like a pair of scissors, and you wedge it out, and to pop them back in, you literally just one push, and it's in, and you go. It's not a very hard process to remove these skate blades, and you add in the fact that these guys are out there skating, you know, 20, 22, 23 miles an hour, and the contact and the abuse that they're taking, these things happen. So, it would be terribly unfortunate if there was a long-term injury or another possibly injury suffered because of skate blade issues. And, you know, this kind of started as a little joke thing on, on Twitter and stuff. But then when you sit back and think about this, it's something that's somewhat important, I think. Yeah. So blame this on the equipment folks there. Or who do you blame this on? I think no, no, company? it's not the equipment guys at all. No, this the is certainly company. This is something that just the way that the way these are made. So, Players have, whether it's a skate issue during the game with their blades in particular, or if they just don't like the way their blades feel, everyone has their blades sharpened to different, um, different. what's the word to use? Um, the, 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 width of the, the width of the blade itself. Some people like it to be a little, it depends if you like more glide or if you want to dig into the ice. I skate on three quarters because I like to have more glide. I don't like to dig into the ice. I almost like where my feet are slipping on the ice, like where I'm wearing shoes. As a referee, that's actually better for me so I can slide into the blue line and stop and get my calls and stuff like that. But there are some people who might like like go, go down to like, th like a quarter of an inch or a half an inch so you dig into the ice more so you can turn and cut a little bit better. But where I'm going with this is – Players in the NHL might want to change really fast. Ice surfaces are different. Some ice surfaces are softer than others. So, they so might much use bad it. ice that the VGK plays on. There you can be bad ice all over the NHL, including T-Mobile and City National Arena at times. All my hockey kids, when they went from lifeguard to City National for a game a couple weeks ago, they were struggling on the ice. I don't know what, what the difference was. But the point being is they make these quick trigger releases so the equipment managers, or if you're a player, you can simply pop off one blade, pop off another one that might have a different type of sharpness on it or a different edge on it. So you can obviously do your thing. So I it's think, almost uh, you like know, the NASCAR pit crew, the way they can change a tire really fast, I guess. Well, uh, you know, I think part of the problem is Eichel has the longest illegal stick in the NHL. Right, and he has to skate the harder, curve, bro. Stop it. He has to catch up to his stick. No, they changed the, the rule a while back regarding the length of the stick. The I think length it was of the stick. Zidane he's Chara. got the longest stick. Of course, he's going to stop every stinking shot. Are we done with the segment yet? Coming up next, it's what the Friday. We could continue this debate when we return right here on Locked On Golden Knights. <laughs> Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. I hope that I'm reading much better and faster today. I don't want to sound slow. 
Uh, eBay Motors has everything that you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and much, much more. Whether you are into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts to choose from for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what you are looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you are burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts that you need at the prices that you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com, ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back on this edition of Locked On Golden Knights. Tony Cardasco and Chris Golick. Do not adjust the speed on your podcast. You can find us wherever you get your podcast, of course. And make sure tomorrow, or is, we're still going to have an episode there of the Chris Times Chris Show. It'll be in the afternoon at some point after we get back into town. But, yeah, we're definitely going to record tomorrow. We talked about it already. As long as, as long as we get back early enough before WrestleMania starts at 4 p.m. local time. Where is WrestleMania this year? Where's Philadelphia. But oh. there's discussions that could be in Vegas as soon as next year or the year after. Should be here like the Super Bowl each and every year. Should always be here at WTF. There's okay. a big footprint here in Vegas with, with WWE. So we'll see what happens. Okay. WTF time. Uh, I want to start off with this VGK multi versus NHL playoff face off thing, whatever they're doing on Sunday, April the 14th against Colorado on True TV. I figured out who could play the role of Bugs Bunny, of Bugs Bunny. Who do you think on VGK? Because he's at the doctor's office so many times, he always says, What's up, Doc? That's got to be Mark Stone, right? That was stupid. Okay. In any event, you have all these other characters and whatever. I don't know. WTF. Um, all right. So let's talk. We, we started hitting on this a little while ago. So this Arizona Stadium situation is just very intriguing. It seemed like a layup to get their first location, and then the locals didn't want it. The pictures and stuff that they showed of the complex they want to build, they're amazing. It looks awesome. But like Friedman said, this land is supposed to go up for auction. Were they planning on buying it through the auction? I guess that's the first question. The owner is trying to sell the team, but now we're talking about building a stadium. Like this is an absolute clown show. I just don't understand what's happening down there. And it feels like they're trying to really put a square peg in a round hole to keep the Coyotes in an area that, no disrespect, but I don't think the Coyotes are wanted by the fan base. I don't think they're wanted largely in part in the city. And it seems like everywhere they try and go, they're not wanted there. So just, it's like a Band-Aid. Rip it off, pack up the truck, move them to Baltimore, you know, like the Ravens did, and just just, just go. Just do it. Just, just, just leave after tonight's game. Just pack up the truck after tonight's game, move them somewhere else, and call it good. Okay. WTF. WTF. Uh, WTF, the Oilers schedule. You talked about this. Okay, so we've got tonight the Avalanche and the Oilers. On Saturday night, the back-to-backs, there's three of them. This is so stinking stupid. The Battle of Alberta against Calgary, Cal, Gary, tomorrow night. So that's one back-to-back. Next week, they've got the That's Yotes. a heck of a back-to-back, Tony. I'm jumping in. That's a heck of a back-to-back <laughs> to have to play. Keep going. It's stupid. Okay, it's so dumb, and it's so stinking rigged. And I think Mr. Foley was there when they laid out the schedule. And I'm going to stick to my guns there. Okay, next week, uh, the Yotes and the Canucks back-to-back. This is Edmonton's schedule down the stretch, and they're not the Stanley Cup champions, for crying out loud. The Yotes so, and the Avalanche back-to-back to, to wind things up. Out of, what, their last seven games, they've got three back-to-backs, their last eight. Well, crying out loud, this is ridiculous. The Stanley Cup champions should be playing a difficult schedule like that down to the wire. Not a team that is in the race. I am so, so sick of it. It's no, I mean, listen, oh, if I'm an Oilers fan, and if the playoffs, whether they play the Golden Knights, the Canucks, or wherever the Oilers land in the standings, and the same can be said about Vegas, if they start the Oilers playoff series on Saturday the 20th for their fourth game 
in three in three days. Nights. Oh my and god! And the playoffs, the game start at weird times four, too. The game you know, start like at five in the afternoon. Four so. nights, garlic. Not four games in three nights. I always do that. It's like the third time I've done that. This three week. games in four nights. It's like and the I third time in four nights I've I made that mistake. So third game four days. I think I got it right that time. Okay. Um, it's it would be very and even if they play on the and if they don't play on that Saturday the twentieth, they'll play on Saturday the twenty first. That's still a tall order, whether it's on the road at home against the Golden Knights, against the Canucks, against the Preds, like whatever, however it winds up happening. So it's, I mean, the Golden Knights, they're playing every other day, and it would be there. I mean, if it started, if the playoffs start on Saturday the 20th, it would be the Golden Knights' third game in six days. Third game in five days, technically, if you want to do it. Well, six days if you go back a day. Or you give them the extra day off. Like, I mean, everything definitely is shaping up nicely if it is Golden Knights, Oilers, regardless of who has home ice right there. So WTF there, I'll back that one up. Um, and I will just bring up the hurdle situation again. It's, again, I'm not going to get on the side of all the cap conspiracy tinfoil goofballs out there that just love to take these shots from a distance. They have a point. In this circumstance, it's a fair question and this excuse to ask and this excuse and not a circumstance and, and this is where you know the nhl does a good job in some things like using player safety as an example or penalty or penalty calls and offside all these things like the nhl will put out a video talking about why a player got suspended and they'll talk about the player's history and it's actually a pretty good direct and blunt video how about some clarity? You know, if I'm one of the R31 fan bases, I'm wondering why Hurdle's not in the lineup tonight. Okay. It's a fair question. Fair question. Fair okay, question. so here is uh, something from at Rob Hart. Rob Hart, 674-509-82-867-5309. That was a 30-minute show. You should only read the name and stopped after that. I added those last numbers. I just kind of slid those in there. Jenny, Jenny, you know, that's on. Okay. WTF. Oh, very good. Very good. Hurdle is not playing yet because there isn't enough salary cap space to move him off LTIR by about a half a million dollars. Until Hill is healthy and Patera is sent back down or someone like Hill, Carrier, Carrier, I called him, or Wa is placed on LTIR, Hurdle has to stay off the active list. WTF. That is a great summary. That's... And it was what seven seven five three zero nine Rob Hart. That was awesome. Well rehearsed. Uh, at Golden Knight at WTF. Now that VGK is playing like we know they could, why am I hesitant to add Hurdle into the mix? Help me make that thought go away. And then there was so that was at Golden too. Knight. What's that? Golden Knight are hesitant. Are hesitant too. Oh uh yeah. -huh. And then. Uh, at hockey underscore poker, VGK make it out of the first round versus Edmonton. That's a good one. They win that series in three games. Well, come, come on. Um, at Amy Brew Knights, WTF, five minute majors reviewed every game. That's, that's pretty, a good thing. That's a pretty good you have to call the major to, if you'd call anything less than a major, it can't be reviewed. Calling the major is the NFL's equivalent of letting the fumbles play out almost no matter what the circumstances are. Okay. We just have, uh, we've had a lot of good responses here. Did you get anything uh, there on the YouTube side? I got a couple for you here. Hey, okay. I finally got a mention on this channel at Donnie Brook. <laughs> that was the comment of the week right there. That, that was is a good. We did say Donnie Brook yesterday. Yeah, oh that gosh. was absolutely amazing. That thing that was the first words out of Tony's mouth talking about what happened in the Rangers Devils game the night before. Um, and then we have one more here I would like to highlight from John Prince Bandit, Twitter one. WTF, what a great time of the year. VGK coming in hard and getting ready for the playoffs. Lots, lots of excitement in VGK as they have seemed to turn the bad to good and john prince a lot of interactions throughout the week not just on wtf so thank you very much for listening i think you're driving the truck around if i'm not mistaken so uh yeah wow. stay safe and thanks for checking the show up we appreciate that a ton uh wtf this is from at rig season sen our good friend is that another uh, twitter handle that we can we can claim responsibility for <laughs> no you're not going to want after this one WTF, when are we going to have an intervention for Golic's day drinking? That was a good one. No, it's great. Come on, man. That's funny. I'm not okay. acknowledging that. Uh, I, I don't call that a problem. I will. Yeah. 
Yeah, at, Matt, yeah, why don't you bring a drink over at 10 in the morning? We'll have a conversation about it. At Skynet VGK, one of my favorites out there. Um, can we drop Dasco in the Hudson for Lafreniere and the Rangers? And the Rangers retain 50% of his salary. WTF. Of Lafreniere's or your salary? Uh, my, I don't know. Okay, it's funny. And then uh, he comes back with Dasco, get a new fog machine, WTF. Was pretty the fog machine was pretty good today. It was coming in randomly and it was blowing around. It was good. It was a good day today. Did Darth, did Darth Tommy have one? I'm kind of lost here or something. You got, he said you scolded him on one of the shows. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Darth Tommy, I think we're talking about the hurdle situation. Like, I think Darth Tommy took me as kind of talking out both sides of my mouth saying ah, that that's the first. hurdle can slide right into the lineup. But maybe, I think I said as a joke that possibly him coming in could disrupt things. But I definitely, I think maybe it was a misunderstanding. The hurdle. Hurdle will fit in like a glove no matter where he goes in the lineup as long as they leave that top line intact right now. Okay, I can't find the I, – I remember what he said yesterday, and I can't find specifically that tweet. But at Darth Tommy said, WTF, not probably a popular opinion, but Cotter needs to go. No, Cotter doesn't need to go. Cotter no, needs yeah, he to – does. That's what I've been saying. No, Cotter is fine. He doesn't, how's he going to fit in with all this talent? Cotter is not going to be on the get many games in the playoffs, but Cotter's fun. He's he's a warm body who plays hard, who will improve, and he's not going to be a liability to the team when it matters. Cotter's fun. Okay, uh, and I'm not advocating oh, for him to be in the playoffs when the, no, no, no. the healthy roster, but Cotter is a good warm body who only has upside. And oh, I want to complete his tweet. He is not the smartest player. Tries to do so much. He eats a lot of ice time with very little production. He's not wrong there. He would fit better in with a rebuilding team like like Arizona. Probably. I mean, okay, fine. I, I hear the comments about, about that. And Paul Cotter averages 12 minutes and 49 seconds per game. As far as with the team, that's with the likes of Sheldon Rempel, Byron Freeze, Mason Morelli, Dennis Sanko, Colasar. Ron Bjerg will carry it. So his minutes are, are just fine for what he brings to the table. Okay. Um, on tomorrow's radio show for me, uh, 98.5 HD2 in Las Vegas and simulcast on 101.5 here in Las Vegas. Big John McCarthy will be my special guest podcaster. He's not a podcaster. He's a former referee. We're going to talk about UFC and much, much more. That's tomorrow from 8 to 9 a.m. And, of course, UNLV has its annual scrimmage it's annual showcase at Allegiant Stadium, kicking off at 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Get on out there to Allegiant Stadium. Everything is free. The parking is free. Uh, my jokes are free. And the scrimmage is free. Everything free tomorrow, except for the concessions, of course. Are you on the sidelines for that, Tony? Like, yeah, you, I'll you know, be on the sidelines. I'll take some photos. People are going to be wishing you they 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 throw a they throw a sideline route or something like no, no, that. No, no, no. The, the football play fans, where the people on the sidelines go flying that, that they're going to be wishing that's you tomorrow. The football fans embrace me, man. Okay, and then also they'll be okay, the hockey fans are going to be wishing. Paying, uh, yeah, they'll be paying tribute to the 1984 UNLV Rebels. That's the era with Icky Woods will be there. Randall Cunningham. They lost 20 people. 20 people have died from that 84 team. So pretty sad. Pretty sad. But they'll be out there tomorrow, the remaining members of 1984. The team that went 11-2, and two, Mr. Golic. We appreciate cool. everyone tuning in. Okay, do I sound a little bit more on beat today? Because I just don't want to let people down in the office. We're dragging this out. End the show, bro. Okay. The Chris and Chris show is tomorrow. Today was WTF. For my man, Chris Golick, I'm Tony Cardasco from Las Vegas. I'm getting in more syllables today because I stunk yesterday. We'll see you again on Monday right here on Lockdown Golden Knights. Take care.